Friendly greetings, Chorley here, and I see a lot of questions about how to synchronize songs to visuals in Sony Vegas. That's my preferred video editing program. Now I'm going to show you how to do it because I learned <laughs> and I love to share knowledge. This is Mixmeister BPM Analyzer. Like it says, you can get it. Mixmeister.com. Really easy to use. It's kind of like the missing link. Because so what you got to do is take any MP3 and preferably one, of course, with a steady beat. It doesn't work on everything. But if it goes boom, 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 there's a great chance that it will. You can open something through here or you can click and drag it right in there and give it a few seconds. It'll detect the BPM, the beats per minute. This is the magic number you need to know in Sony Vegas. So now let's now, woohoo, let's go into Vegas. What stays in Vegas? Huh? <laughs> so what we can do now, of course, here we have, oh, it's going to look somewhat different from yours, I reckon. I have the video preview right here in my timeline and my master fader mixer thingy. You want to go to file menu and open and open up that music file you're looking for. I know it's taking longer than I desire here. Uh, we're just going to basically prime you for this. We're going to change the ruler mode if you haven't already. It, right now it shows it that it's the beats and measures and that's what you want to have it. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. It's really crawling my file directory. Not sure why, but it should pop open shortly. And here we go. So Charlie Wong, rest in peace. That's one and click open. If you have a big enough monitor or you can drag the Vegas video, um, a window to the side and drag and drop files right into the timeline if you prefer. So the next step is to go to the file menu and then to properties because right in here you're going to want to head to the ruler tab. Notice how I changed it to measures and beats. Normally it could be like time. That's what people are expected to seeing. Like if you if you click time then it changes. See that? Back to measures and beats though because remember the magic number? And if you don't Go back to Mixmeister, 134.92. Okay, good stuff. And let's click OK, because that will rescale it. So now we can, and keep in mind, this is a rather long song. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to click and drag and make this smaller. But you will want to keep in mind with longer songs, they have a tendency to drift because that number isn't perfect. So towards the end, depending how much of it you're using, you want to keep a watchful eye to make sure things are in sync. Let me show you how to do that. So you can click close up here and zoom in. Normally, of course, the preferable situation is to start your very first thing at 1.1, the, the very first bar, the very first measure. However, that sometimes and actually often is not an allowance because there may be background sounds before that. They may be like a reverse symbol that goes whoosh, boom, boom like that, right? You, you know what I'm saying if you've been in that situation. So usually you can start at the second bar. The good thing, of course, is with Vegas tools, you can later cut out slop if you don't need it at the beginning, but it's just to get uh, a good grip. So let's start on the second bar. And if you need to make this higher, then just click plus, 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 plus. Hi there. And we can zoom in. I mean, we're already zoomed in quite a bit. And I'm just using my scroll wheel, by the way. I really recommend having one. Some people swear by a shuttle pro, I think, for, for navigation. Depends what you're really into. And if you're finding it hard to slip and slide, you can options and turn off snapping. But snapping is important when you want to do get things to the grid. Do great things to the grid. Okay, so this is a bit off. Sometimes you'll encounter what I call a kinky beat. It's not quite aligned, but for the most part, okay, these ones are going to be, you want to get them close to here, and you don't want to just trust your eyes. Don't do that. Go by your ear too. Hopefully you have a precise sound card where you can click here, and I'll push, push space bar to preview. Okay, good. So the goal here is that as you go forth in the song, you can go at the beginning of a bar, and you can press, I mean, let's turn back the grid, and you should be able to press the space bar to preview or play here, and it should start. And oh, by the way, don't worry sometimes if the numbers are somewhat off, because there are sometimes musics like this one where there's an effect for one measure and then it slips. And uh, it's, but a lot of songs, oh, that's why. It, this one was my fault. Blame me for this one because it should have been a little bit ahead. Now, it takes trial and error, so you'll learn by doing. So drag it to the beginning of 2.2. 2. 
So this one actually, it does have, I think, a slipped measure later in the song. Not something for you to worry about, but in case you want to begin at, for the sake of simplicity of counting, because then you could go one, two, three, four, right? Like up here, one, two, three, four, and the new bar begins. And then at the start of bar, with the grid turned on, because it's easier to click and directly snap, then you can preview it like this. Okay, good. So you want the start of the beat. You want it to be a clean, clean start. Because you notice when I go for it like this, and now when I go to the beginning, like 21.1, you want to go for the number ones, right? And two is good too. Okay. And so you just go at the beginning of beats. Because as you notice, this is really easy with dance music at the beginning because it tends to have just the kick drum and perhaps a bass line. Other music can be more complicated. And, and also, you know, when you get more elements later on, it gets more complicated. But here we are towards the end of this clip. And let's see if it's still online. It looks online, in line. So preview that. Tight. Good stuff. So that's what you want to have going. You probably want to file menu save to your progress. Let me show you now how this works with the visuals. And you can use your imagination. But the key thing right now is to drag to the grid. And remember, this is a kinked beat. This is not totally on. So let's go forth and let's start on this bar, which is good. And most of this music focuses on eight bar sections, with some exceptions, but in most cases. Here you can right click, oh, pardon, right click down here and insert a video track. So now we have a video track. And one of the quickest ways to test this out is either with a solid color swatch, perhaps, that fades out, or right click. And synchronizing text is very, very fun. So let's insert text media. And I particularly like the word boom. So we, here we have the word boom. And you can change the font. You can change all the styling. These are the basics, though, that will help get you started. So you can close that. And like I said, it's positioned right there. If it's not, then make sure snap to grid is on. And that you just drag it so it's exactly lined up. See the, see the line there? See the line? OK, so it's lined up with three. So each one is a beat, and it's nice to have things on the beat. Dun, 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 dun. So I just drag that to snap to grid again, and let's fade it out. So click and drag and fade it out, and then I will click on this. Well, it's already clicked, actually, and Control-C to copy, and click here, and Control-V to paste. Yeah, you want to copy. Do that several times until you have four, for starters, and then you can zoom out a bit. Whoops, I mean zoom out, not zoom in. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. So you can see it matches the beat like that. Excellent. And now when we preview it, spacebar, we'll just go a little bit before, okay, like there. See, see, watch that. Right in time with that, fantastic. And of course, you can right click and you can change the edit generated media to change the color if you want to have like properties and make it red or something or even change effects and draw an outline for the purposes of that. So this one, of course, then we, it would be uh, red there with a yellow outline. You can just delete that and you can apply and copy and paste the same thing. And if you miss copy, like if you accidentally go to the wrong place and I'm paste, you can always drag it back, snap it like that. Okay, now let's watch this again. See how easy that is? And you can also do this. It's great to do with transition effects. Like, for example, if you want to have a boom, let's copy and paste that, that is leading up to now. And, okay, we'll just keep this one, actually. Do, 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 let me just drag this back. So it's in its entire strength. But the thing is, we can add a transition, like if we wanted to right-click, and let's see what we want to do. Video effect, event effect sounds pretty good. Oh, wow. Big window. Hello there. And let's see. What do we got? What do we got? So in my various sort of effects here, uh, Gaussian blur is cool. Oh, you can't see this window. It's like too big. Let me just make sure you can see this here. Otherwise, it would be very inconsiderate and rude of me. I don't want to do that. I want to help you. Okay. So Gaussian blur. And... Again, this window is too big. This is, comes from recording my entire monitor, way bigger than it actually. Okay. So we can start at the beginning of this event uh, timeline or keyframes here, rather. You can start with reset to none. And by the end, I mean click here, sorry, and reset to none. 
And by the end here, then just I just click that, you can choose extreme blur. So as you watch this, so it's the last beat there, and it's and it starts and it gets very foggy like that. So it sort of plays out like this, and it'll be a little rougher because I haven't pre-rendered, I think, but if I do play it, see, <laughs> isn't that cool? Or in this case, if I edit this uh, video event effect some more, it might have been better if it was the opposite. Like if it was very blurred at the beginning, these are all done to aesthetic taste and none there. So we just quickly reverse that effect, we close this, and now it's like, it's leading into the boom. And this is a nice thing with reverse cymbal sweeps, like, like this. Like that, see? And of course, you can copy and paste. These are very modular, so if you want to replace this with that, you can just go ahead and do that and whatever and just play it again. Like that, see? Isn't that tight? And you can extend that principle to other things, video clips, all sorts of stuff. You can, of course, apply it to, it's useful with everything, because once you have your grid established, it is so good. Just imagine how you'll do this with your video. It's so good to do with track motion, or if you're going to change pan and zoom. Like if I right click here, and if I were to choose pan and crop, and again, let me make this window smaller. I apologize for this, hopefully, okay, you can see everything there. And again, the familiar keyframe. This is one of the nice things about Vegas. So I say that I wanted to, okay, that's the frame there. I wanted to zoom in. And then I just double click anywhere in the timeline and just drag this to the very end, put a new keyframe there. And at the start, then I would leave that alone. But at the end, I would change this so it's like 320 or even 120. So it just goes into the middle. And I can right click this. Oh, you can't quite see that. I just right click this and I would make it smooth or sharp. Sharp is cool for these things because as we'll see, watch this. Haha, <laughs> did you see that? Did you see that? Let me just make this bigger here. That was pretty neat. Right there. Pay attention to that, okay? <laughs> so you can try all sorts of variations. It's really delightful. I've done stuff both simple and advanced. You can layer the effects. But remember the key thing is that always, always that at the start of a grid line like this, a grid beat, one, two, three, four, it should be a clean, prominent percussion hit because that's what it is, the rhythm. So no matter how far we go in here, one, you notice it's clean. And just like that. So have fun with this tutorial. Please let me know what you think and feel. This has been Torley showing you how to do beat sync effects in Sony Vegas.